Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 7th of September. Incessant rains wreak havoc in India's northern Uttar Pradesh. Pakistan will never again fight someone else's war, says Prime Minister Imran Khan. An Afghan government slammed over Kabul's insecurity. And now for all the details, heavy rains in northern India this year have caused flood-like situation in parts of northern Uttar Pradesh province. Waterlogging has affected the day-to-day -day life of the locals. The worst affected cities in the province include Kanpur, Varanasi and Allahabad. Incessant rains in the past few days in northern India have caused flood-like situation in parts of northern Uttar Pradesh province. The worst affected cities were Kanpur, Varanasi and Allahabad. People in Varanasi city were seen wading through chest deep drain waters. The water logging has further affected the school children in the region. In Nala ka pani hai, BHU se saayda raha hai, udhar sir se aa raha hai, har jaga se pani idhar aa raha hai, nikasi nahi ho raha hai. Tabiyat kharaab ho ja raha hai. Meanwhile, similar scenes were witnessed in Kanpur city where day-to-day -day life of local residents has been crippled due to the similar conditions. Torrential rains have turned roads and railway tracks into pools and submerged and damaged hundreds of houses. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan said on Thursday that the country will not be a part of anyone else's war. Pakistan and the United States have remained at odds over Islamabad's degree of commitment to root out militants operating on its soil. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan said on Thursday that the country will not be part of anyone else's war. He made the remarks during the Defence Day ceremony in Islamabad to pay tribute to the soldiers on the 53rd anniversary of the 1965 Indo-Pakistan War. Khan said that he was against the involvement of the armed forces in the foreign war from the very first day and that the country's foreign policy will now be for the betterment of the nation under his command. His remarks came a day after the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in Islamabad, which aimed to reset ties between the two countries. Relations between Washington and Islamabad have frayed since U.S. President Donald Trump in January this year accused Pakistan of supporting the Taliban militants wreaking havoc in neighboring Afghanistan. Pakistan has maintained it has sacrificed a lot in the fight against terrorism and is being used as a scapegoat by the U.S. for its failures in Afghanistan. Moving on, several U.S. congressmen recently urged the Pakistan's new government to treat its ethnic and religious minority equally and with dignity. They urge Islamabad to stop the ongoing human rights violation against the Baloch, Muhajirs and the Pashtuns. Several U.S. lawmakers have urged the Pakistan new Mohajis. government to treat its ethnic Those and religious minorities minority. equally and with dignity. While addressing the Minorities Day on the Hill event in Washington, the lawmakers Amanda urged the Imran Khan government to stop human rights violations of minorities in Karachi, as well as in Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. They also highlighted that Muhajirs, Muslim who migrated to Pakistan from India during the partition in 1947, had left their homes hoping for a better future, but they were not welcomed in their new homeland. And I'm not advocating on behalf of any sort of um, radical change to U.S. policy, except to, that we demand that our allies treat their minorities with equality and with dignity. We hope, it is our hope, and it is our... It is our demand that our allies feel the same way about all religious peoples. We can all live together and practice our faith in, in peace and in harmony. And that's how it should be, not only in America, that's how it is in America, but that's how it should be everywhere. 
Mohajirs have long claimed to have suffered from human rights violations at the hands of a nation which they say does not accept them as their own. Several activists have also raised concern in the past, blaming that innocent people from religious and ethnic minorities are subjected to torture, killing and enforced disappearances for raising their voices in the country. In news from Afghanistan, residents in western part of Afghan capital Kabul on Thursday lashed out at the government over Wednesday's twin blasts and accused security forces of not doing enough to ensure their safety. More than 20 people were killed and several wounded in the terror attack. Angry residents of dasht e barchi area in Afghanistan's capital city of Kabul have lashed out at the government over Wednesday night's double bombing and accused security forces of not doing enough to ensure their safety. After the first explosion at Maywan Wrestling Club in the area on Wednesday, residents have raised the alarm over a dark blue Toyota Corolla car that had been abandoned in the narrow street opposite the gym. An hour after the gym explosion, the same blue Toyota Corolla blew up, eyewitnesses reported. <laughs> More than 20 people were killed in the twin blast with over 70 people wounded. The first explosion occurred on Wednesday after a terrorist shot dead by the security guard detonated his explosive belt inside the Maywan wrestling gym and the second blast occurred an hour later when a car bomb was detonated. The second blast targeted the police officers, reporters and the crowds of people gathering near the scene of the first explosion. No militant group has claimed responsibility for the attack so far. India's border security force on Friday said the post demonetization there has been a drop in fake currency influx through the Indo-Bangladeshi border. The remarks were made after a bi-annual meeting concluded between top security officials of India and Bangladesh in New Delhi. A senior official of India's border security force on Friday said that post demonetization there has been a drop in fake currency influx through the Indo Bangladesh border. The remarks were made during a meeting between top officials of India's border security force and border guards Bangladesh in New Delhi. The biannual meeting came at a time when relations between India and Bangladesh are at an all time high. The two sides also shared updates about the movement of Rohingyas in their respective jurisdictions. But the volume is so low, I think it was a few lakhs of rupees, 11 lakhs only, is the, is the seizure in the, in the last uh, few months, I think. Uh, this year, the, the seizure is 11 uh, lakhs only. This FICN is also a concern in Bangladesh too. So, we have installed our vigilance all along the borders, including uh, we have increasingly using uh, machines to detect FICN in all, especially in the, all the um, uh, land ports and important markets where transaction of huge volumes takes place. I hope Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the abolition of 500 and 1,000 rupee notes in November 2016, aiming to crack down on the shadow economy. The move was designed to bring billions of dollars worth of cash in unaccounted wealth into the mainstream economy, as well as dent the finances of militants who target India and are suspected of using fake 500 rupee notes to fund their operations. Members of the LGBT community who have been living in fear till date in India took a breath of relief after the country's top court on Thursday gave a landmark judgment of decriminalizing gay sex. Gay sex was reinstated as a criminal offence in 2013 in India and was punishable by up to 10 years in jail. Member of the LGBT community Suzanne, who has been living in fear till date, took a breath of relief after India's apex court gave a landmark judgment of decriminalizing gay sex on Thursday. Suzanne, who is a transgender, hails from India's northeastern Manipur province and works as a professional makeup artist. She believes key to acceptance by the society begins from the family. Since childhood, Suzanne used to love dressing up like a girl due to which she faced lots of criticism and anger. But during her college days, she convinced her father about her identity and opted to live her life like a girl. 
day by day uh, uh, when it was in April uh, 2014, uh, transgender was recognized as third gender. I was little happy but not much happy because uh, there has to be, you know, um, accepted between LGBT community, not transgenders only, le gay, lesbians, bisexuals, they should be also accepted. And, you know, at that time, uh, I feel happy. But today, uh, you know, about the verdict, after the verdict was legalized, I feel much happy. I don't know how to express my feelings. India's Supreme Court on Thursday gave a landmark unanimous decision of overturning the ban on gay sex in a landmark judgment. Gay sex is considered taboo by many in India and it was reinstated as a criminal offence in 2013 after four years of decriminalisation. Earlier, it was punishable by up to 10 years in jail. A four-day judo camp organized to coach young players in Indian capital New Delhi concluded on Friday. A team from Japan was specially invited by the Indian Judo Federation to practice with and improve skills of Indian players during the camp. A four-day judo coaching and practice session for young players in Indian capital New Delhi concluded on Friday. Judo, which is Japanese form of martial art, has attracted hordes of enthusiastic youngsters who are learning it for self-defense and also as a way to stay physically fit and proceed to pursue it as a career. A Japanese team was in India on the request of the Indian Judo Federation to practice with and improve judo skills of Indian players during the camp. We are very happy to be here. Uh, we are asked by Indian Judo Federation to come here to help improve the Indian Judo uh, skills. And so, all Japan Judo Federation dispatched us. Judo was established as a form of mental training as well as a sport in the 19th century. It then attracted attention internationally and is now an official event at the Olympic Games since 1964. Scores of people attended a preaching session by Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama, which concluded on Friday in India's northern Dharamshala town. He delivered a message stressing on compassion and peace at the main Buddhist monastery in the hill town. Thousands of devotees from across the globe attended a preaching session by exiled Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala, which concluded on Friday. The devotees converged for four days at the main Buddhist monastery in the town to listen to sermons by their spiritual leader. The Dalai Lama gave teachings on Buddha Palita's commentary on the fundamental wisdom of the Middle Way. The participants included followers from mostly Indonesia, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. I have been uh, practicing uh, Buddhist uh, for all my life and uh, I have read uh, some uh, articles and also books uh, about uh, Dalai Lama and uh, I really really like to come and uh, you know to learn from him. India is home to almost 100,000 Tibetans. Exiled Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama has lived in the country since fleeing a failed uprising against Chinese rule of his homeland in 1959. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. Incessant rains wreak havoc in India's northern Uttar Pradesh. Pakistan will never again fight someone else's war, says Prime Minister Imran Khan. An Afghan government slammed over Kabul's insecurity. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night.